So it's been a long number of years since I've been to South Africa where security is paramount and I was just wondering what has changed. Um, there's a motion detector back here. There's like a, a, a door sensor thing here and there's like these various beam things. Can you see that thing over there? Lovely, beautiful day. Well, it seems that a, a, a things that used to be wired in the past are now wireless. But other than that, um, you know, false alarms and things like that. Security hasn't seemed to change it that, that much to me. I mean, there's nothing that's sort of like, oh, that solves that problem type thing. The only thing I have seen was yesterday, I didn't get a good picture of it, but the, the neighborhood um, watch people were wearing like a uniform bib or something and they were out in force uh, yesterday helping to mitigate some sort of incident. Um, yeah, that that I thought was really powerful when the, when the whole neighborhood gets together, you know, coordinated by WhatsApp. I think that's the only development I've seen of note. Um, the rest of it is just pretty much the same and um, this place doesn't have these ugly high walls and, and, and electric fences but that's what it is like in a city. I can't help but think the trend has to change, it has to be different um, than what they have now. I'm not very impressed. It would be great if there was some study to see what actually works and what doesn't. See you guys. All right, first winery of the day, Ernie else. Um, my mother's been here before actually, and she said it was great. So I'm experiencing it, and yeah, the garden's great, the layout's great. She's got these boulders. Well, wow. weather as usual is just insane. So at the only else uh, winery estate, the deal is you sit down, you go for like a 40 rand wine tasting where they show you sort of four their wines and enjoy these magnificent views. And maybe you have a try golf. <laughs> Second port of call is Rustin Frieda. We're quite hungry. But oh my lord, the scenery all around here is incredible. Only else is nice. Hopefully, there's some decent food. So, in this place, you have the choice between the steak or the salmon, and the steak is what we all chose the sirloin with the mustard butter and the sort of beef dripping fried chips and salad. It was pretty darn amazing. I enjoyed it very much. I love these huge bottles of wine. I mean, they make a celebration. This one here, 27 liters, 27,000 rand. Isn't this the most crazy, beautiful background ever? Uh, you got the mountain, you got the red roses, you got like this little idyllic path. You got the vineyards, you got you got trees. Oh my lord, everything. So um, nearby there's a telecom drive about fiber optic, and um, where local residents are informed that they, there's fiber optic on the road. But the hilarious thing, uh, to my amazement, it's only on one side of the road, and it's only on two of the roads right here. So um, anyone who, who's not on that side of the road needs to pull fiber, um, and he said it's really expensive to do that that way. So it's kind of like a lottery. If you, if you win it, you're in it. If you're out, then you... Two, three... Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god, let's go! 
I lost my glasses. <laughs> oh my god, that is cold. Hold that. Three. No, you're not gonna jump in. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> watch out! <laughs> I was trying to explain on video that that fiber optic installed up there is only on two roads and only on the left hand side of the road. Mm. <laughs> so if you're on the wrong side of the road, you won't get fiber optic. Unless you pay for it. And if you pay to get pulled, that means you need to. Dig a hole in the ground because you can't put it overhead, and you have to get planning permission, and you have to get um, yeah, and, and someone to do it for you. So if you're on the right side of the road, you don't have to pay anything for the install. If you're on the wrong side of the road, you have to you have to get a contractor to pull it over. So if you're ever buying houses, you've got to buy them on the right side of your road. Yeah, wherever it is. And and what I found interesting was that was that I asked him where where is the fiber optic. He says. You need to tell me my your address, and I put it into this uh, into this uh, form. Mm. And then I t I, was, I couldn't quite remember the address, but I gave him an address. He whipped out WhatsApp. You know the chatting thing. Yeah. And then the, he had an African on a uh, colored guy. Yeah. He he then put the address in the um, in the WhatsApp to his uh, colleague. I said, "That's the form you use. You use WhatsApp." Uh, yeah, he says, that's how we use it. So I can't use this uh, thing. No, no, you have to tell me the sales representative, and then he he text messaged the telecom operative, and then and then he got and then the telecom opter operative got back to him whether the place had a fiber optic or not. Yeah. So well, why didn't you put the map online? Oh no, no, can't, don't, not not possible. Anyway, it's quite a sad situation, but in England it's also a sad situation. So it's everywhere. Seems to be a uh, uh, in it, well in every home in Singapore you can get a fiber optic, optic point. Yeah. So it's not it's not quite everywhere. Well, that's how it is, isn't it? Bad bad planning, bad vision. Okay, well it's the end of the week of uh, you and I and all hanging out together. So can we just say cheers to whoever made it this far? Uh, I guess it's only like your turn and anybody else. Cheers to Cheers. the camera. Cheers. My glass is going to be empty. Hello. Cheers, guys. See you. Was a good trip. Wish you were here. Next time we go with you. <laughs> and Rob.